And we're just so glad you're back in the music world. Thank um, you. Well, we'll catch up more about what you've been up to the past few years, maybe after another song. It's sure. Kathleen Edwards here live on WMCW. Uh, this is a song. Uh, the, the biggest downside of getting back on the road, of course, is, is watching the guilty dog face watch you leave out of the driveway through the window. And uh, there's a song called Who Rescued Who. One, two, three, four. I picked you up on the other side of the river. Dogs and alcohol, they go so good together Cause you were so sweet immediately Oh, charm me with your skin and bone Hop in the back seat Here we go Under the little Catalpa tree Is where I put you with a rock that says your name that I have made for you And now my favorite thing to say is who rescued you, who rescued you, who rescued who, who, who? Picked up a habit I'm just trying to lose Called all this courage in a glass Helps me keep up to you Cause when we walk down the street Everybody will just stop and say Oh boy, aren't you so sweet? Well, I felt that too Tell a tree is where I put you with a rock that says your name that I had made for you. And now, my favorite thing to say is who rescued who, who rescued who. That is Kathleen Edwards on WNCW live uh, with Colin Cripps. The two are here in Spindale currently on their way to a show tonight in Asheville at the Gray Eagle. They play the Cat's Cradle in Carborough tomorrow night and then the Evening Muse in Charlotte on Saturday. Kathleen Edwards, singer, songwriter, guitarist, dog lover. <laughs> Big fan of dogs, dog rescuer. Dog walker, future uh, retiree to walk dogs, yes. You know, I know a few folks who have made a vocation out of that. Uh, one hey, of man, our, cash business. Yeah, seriously. It's good. I'm into it. Well, also, it's a good thing to do, you know, when yeah, the, the dog parents go away. They, they need someone to give them some TLC and go for a walk and yeah. such. <laughs> and it's better company than people. I mean, let's just be honest here. Sometimes did I say that out loud? You did. You did. Yes. Uh huh. Uh huh. It's all right. It's all right. It's just us right here. No one else listening. <laughs> no one's listening. <laughs> no other people. Maybe maybe a few dogs. I don't know. Um, I think once in a while, sometime there was someone played a dog whistle on, on during a session here, and we heard that some dogs heard that. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, I guess dogs uh, and having pets uh, was maybe part of the uh, therapy for you during the, the period in which you kind of retracted from the music world and uh, opened up the coffee shop and such. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I w took a working sabbatical um, 
And if anyone ever had a dream of one day, you know, moving home and opening up a coffee shop, call me before you do it. <laughs> I have, uh, I, I'll talk you out of it. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. It was an amazing experience. I, 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 yeah, I really just needed something else in my life that, that, um, and I opened up a coffee shop and I called it Quitters and, um, and it was an amazing, I just sold it this year. So it's, it was eight years that I, I had that business and, and it was just wonderful because my life was so nomadic and I lived in a bubble, um, from, you know, my early twenties of being kind of slightly isolated and also just always moving and not, I was part of a music community, but I never really felt, even though my hometown really championed me when I went out and, you know, was on TV and in the paper, I never really felt like I had built a home community around me. And, you know, within six months of opening up a coffee shop, I knew everybody's business. Let me tell you, I was part of a community. I know who's, who was having an affair, who was getting divorced, who was selling their house, whose kids were jerks. Um, (laughs) and, uh, I just, I kind of, it was a wonderful experience and I built this really meaningful kind of an ecosystem around myself and, you know, the generosity of others. And I got to employ young people and sort of, that was a big part of my my early days as, as a young adult was working in restaurants and in coffee shops and, you know, good bosses and, and people that really mentored me and supported, encouraged me, played a huge role in where I went. And I was thrilled to sort of then get a chance to, to sort of pay that, that thing forward. I loved it. Yeah. Yeah. There were other folks that, uh, that helped steer you on back in the day and then you were able to be a mentor to them. That's and I got good. good coffee, and I was caffeinated doing it, which helps. Well, know? that's important, too. <laughs> yeah. There was something funny I read about in your coffee shop, uh, so, uh, certain coffee you at, you offered to kids or something, or unruly kids, decaf or something. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, the, the politi- when the politicians come to town to, to campaign in your, in your business, you give them decaf for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, you know, there's, I think there's a funny saying, like, unruly children are given a decaf, are given an espresso and a puppy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did you ever have to do that? No, no uh, okay. but I, I did have to eventually remove my dogs from my business. It was, oh. it was not allowed. Shoot. I got a slap on the wrist oh. from, from the government, of course. Oh, the that, government did not yeah. like the dogs being in the coffee shop. So, yeah. Was this, was, were you plan? was it a planned hiatus or at the time were you like, that's it, I'm done with music. I'm going to do this coffee shop until I retire. Um, honestly, I don't think I ever really known where I was going and what I was doing. I I mean, it was very intentional that I decided I was going to do something else that wasn't music, but you know, I was really, I was actually really unwell. Colin and I were married, newsflash, (laughs) and then we stopped being married. And I think the actual period of time in which we split up was actually really destabilizing and a very hard time for me, um, not just, not like just Colin, but the experience of going through something like that and having had a life that was kind of a tornado and not having time to recover or think about it. And I I actually became very depressed and thankfully, uh, found a great doctor after a couple of years of feeling like I was really not well. I got diagnosed with clinical depression and, and, I never thought that that meant that I had to stop playing music. It's just the joy of, of what I used to, you know, I, the, of, I couldn't imagine not playing an open mic night or driving wherever I had to drive to to play a show. All of the things that were hard about it weren't hard, and then suddenly everything became sort of punishingly difficult. And I thought, well, surely that means that I shouldn't be doing this. And... Um, and so I, I th- I'm, it wasn't an easy decision. I felt like I was disappointing a lot of people, but I really just needed some time to, to take a breath and not have my life and my identity wrapped up in being on stage and being available to have people comment about how I look or whether or not they like my music. It was nice to work in a coffee shop where someone comes in and goes, are you the owner? I was like, yeah, I'm the owner. They're like, oh, are you the country singer? And I was like, yes, I am. <laughs> How do you like it? <laughs> right. You know, that, that's a nice, that's a really good reset on your ego. Let me tell you. It's healthy. Well, well, it took a lot of courage considering how many folks were big fans of yours and how you know, the music world was a big part of your identity. It took a lot of courage to say like, you know what? I need to take a break. 
thank you. I, 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 that's a, that's a very, um, in, profoundly meaningful compliment, but I say that mostly too, because I think at the time when I was so l felt quite lost, I didn't feel like there was anyone that was out there that I could kind of align myself to and, and ga gain some kind of idea of where I should go. You know, I had this like fantasy. I was like, maybe I could call Joni Mitchell and she could tell me what to do. Well, she quit. So <laughs> obviously that would be the advice she'd probably give me. But uh, I say thank you because I hope that that story resonates with people who feel like they're lost or that they're not sure what they should be doing or feel like if they stop and stop doing something that it's somehow a betrayal of all the energy they've put into something. Cause I really don't believe that. I think, I think we have many chapters in our lives and we don't have to just stick with one thing. And the more things we try and failures are, are part of our journey to success in life. And, and I, I, so I say thank you cause I hope that other people go, it's okay to feel like it's good to try something new when something isn't working. doesn't mean you failed. It means that, you're still just going to try something new. Something else is around the corner. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Well, was there one thing that, one spark that inspired you to get back on the music course? Well, I have to give credit to um, Marin Morris, who's a very popular singer, musician, performer, entertainer. Um, she had her manager reach out to me. And this was probably three or four years into me owning my coffee shop, asking me to come to Nashville and write with her and that... She was a big fan of my early work and she was writing for a new record. Would I consider coming and doing a session? And uh, I'm not really a co-writer. I would never did the Nashville co-writing thing. I sort of had a bit of a bee in my bonnet about what that must feel or look like. But I thought, well, what do I have to lose? I'm not really doing this anymore. So I said yes. And, and it was a really great weekend of re being reminded of something that comes very naturally to me, which is to create songs and tell stories. And I loved being included in something that kind of reminded me that of something that's really important to me and that I felt really good about. And so I kind of came home from that trip and was like, I'm going to start writing again. Yeah. Well, thank you, Marin Morris yeah. <laughs> of the High Women and, uh, and more for that. Yeah.